Welcome to the Juniper Network's Educational Services Learning Bytes. Today's Juniper Wireless LAN topic will be an overview of our full life cycle management tool, Ringmaster. My name is Steve Elliott and I'll be your host. Section Objectives. After successfully completing this learning byte, you will be able to log in to the Ringmaster client interface and navigate the major functional areas of the Ringmaster GUI. Let's now take a look at logging into Ringmaster. Ringmaster supports both a regular installed client and also a 100% Java-based client, so you can just open your browser up to the IP address of the server with the installation port that you use for install. If you've set up users already, then you put in your username and your password. Let's now go to our demo setup here. We have Ringmaster installed with the client on the same machine as the Ringmaster server. As you can see, we've got the loopback address of 127.0.0.1. The installation port was 448. We installed SmartPass also on this server, so it's using port 443. There's currently no username and no password set up. We've kept an open system for the demo. I then click on Next. This will then take us to our main client interface. We'll then discuss the client interface in more detail in the next segment. Let's now take a look at the client interface. We have the drop down menus located here on top for files, services, tools, and help. We have the functional area icons where we can go to do monitoring, where we can do reports, device management, verification of our configuration, do major configuration for um, our controllers, do our planning and create policies which is create a generic type controller where I've got common types of configurations that I'm going to apply to a group of controllers. Configure once, apply to many. Now the organizer panel here is the left hand side. Whatever you select in the organizer panel you'll see that the main properties for that object appear here in what is called the viewing panel some of which you can change, some of which you cannot. For example, if I go down to wireless services here, you will notice that I have a table with several attributes, like I could change the SSID name. Otherwise, I can go into properties, and then I can go to one of the more advanced attributes and set up, for example, I could set up encryption. At the very bottom, we have what we call the configuration alerts and warning panel. Down here you will notice that I can see that I've got configuration errors and warnings. If I click on that, that will take me the same as what verification would, so that I can see what I might have misconfigured or something that I might have done that was non-standard. Warnings are non-standard and errors are just mistakes that I've made. Also located down here is whether or not any changes. Now, a, chain, a local change is like a candidate configuration. Network change is like your running configuration. Maybe I made a change to the CLI versus that of Ringmaster. Ringmaster has gone out, pulled, seen the change flag's been tripped, so therefore it would show network changes. I could then go to devices and view them. Alarms are what's coming into my system for SNMP traps and I can view these through a number of different ways, either through alarms or through my different monitoring capabilities, like for my general monitoring or specific for like client or security. Let's briefly now take a look at some of the major functional areas. Policies allow us to configure once. This is where I have very many repetitive types of configuration that are common to a group of controllers. Like here, I've set up a global policy that applies to all my controllers. And this particular thing that I've set up is for Radius. So I've set up a Radius server, and it belongs to a Radius server group that can be applied to a group of controllers that I've got assigned to the policy. And so therefore, I can go back underneath configuration, go back underneath 
trip light and radius and see that it's already configured so now I can deploy it down. So once again we're working with the candidate configuration. So policies can be either global or they can be specific. RF planning allows me to do what's called predictive planning. This requires the RF planning license which is an advanced feature license allows you to plan for indoors and outdoors. Now this gives you a general plan that um, we're using the example um, built into the um, Ringmaster and with this I can do advanced visualization for example I can look at my NGRF pattern or I can clear and look at my NARF pattern. I'm looking for coverage holes and these would be like white areas like located over here on the left hand side. Now for more advanced viewing capability I can come into my advanced views for example I want to look at the RSSI because I'm planning for voice and my voice devices are 11G devices. So therefore I'm looking for dark green and, and medium green and if I see any orange like in the upper corner here or kind of a reddish then that means that that could be a problematic area. So our planning gives us great detail and the ability to play what if. Configuration now. Configuration allows us to do individual configuration tasks for a controller. For example, I may want to turn off the PoE in port 2, for example. And then I can deploy my change now, like so. So we have a fast deployment option there that allows you to do that. Now, from here, we got verification. Verification, once again, this allows me to manage any warnings or errors I got. Warnings are non-standard, errors are mistakes that I made. For example, I've got an error here that radio profile has no um, associated service profile. By coming over to resolutions, I can edit the radio profile to make the correction. So it launches the wizard, takes me right to the properties wizard for that object so I can make my correction. I could also go and create a service profile if one doesn't exist. I can disable the rule for all instances or disable the rule for just this instance and they're referring to the ability to deploy right then and there. So just a one-time exception is what I would disable the rule for. Now devices allow me to manage devices. For example, I have changes available. I take a look. My network status has the OK, so that means that as of the last polling interval, the change flag has not been tripped. So therefore, I should be able to click on Deploy and see my deployment successfully complete. Now that pushes down candidate configuration and makes it a part of the permanent running configuration. Monitor allows me to be able to monitor my devices. This gives me a summary level monitoring capability with the ability to drill down and to see my equipment in different ways. So this is, I'm looking currently at Sunnyvale as a mobility domain group. And this is controller EDU-1. Underneath there I have a single AP and I can even drill all the way down to the radio level. Now we have four different panels in here. You have status summary, alarm summary, client by SSID. We also can look at clients in lots of other ways. We also have our throughput that we can monitor based on time from one hour up to one year. Now we also have over here on the left hand panels I can view my equipment um, by the services that they broadcast out. I can also look at it related to the site itself for example for floor number one. Clients allow me to look at my client information in different ways. Right now I'm looking at clients by SSID, but I may want to look at clients by access type. And once again, then I can do more advanced client monitoring for like troubleshooting. We also can do advanced things like look at voice calls and be able to use advanced voice features with the um, advanced voice licensing for monitoring. Security. 
This allows us to look at our security monitoring capabilities, intrusion detection, denial of service alarms. It will allow us also to take a look at things like graphical format or go to details. Now when I click on details, this takes me over to my alarms area where I can see a history of my alarms and I can also see all the events related to that. We can also do advanced um, configuration on alarms so that there's lots of capabilities to go and customize the alarms for your particular needs. Now underneath um, reports we have advanced reporting capability. We give you a whole library of CAN reports. For example, it's a self-documenting system so that I could get a complete inventory control as well as a complete configuration of all my controllers. And we can schedule reports that are important to us to run at a given time. Uh, for example, I may want to walk in as an admin every morning and at 7 a.m. have a complete um, rogue report summary generated emailed to me every day automatically. This concludes the learning bite for the Ringmaster Overview. Visit the Juniper Education Services website to learn more about courses. View our full range of classroom, online, and e-learning courses. Learning paths, industry segment and technology specific training paths. Juniper Networks Certification Program, the ultimate demonstration of your competence. And the training community, from forums to social media, join the discussion.